I don't remember specifically meeting them, but I do remember um, thinking that they were the absolute coolest people I'd ever met in my life. Um, you know, Alan wasn't. Alan was hired a couple days after me, so the first people I would have met was Mark and JJ and Nina. And um, I was totally enamored with them and thought they were so cool. It's almost like your mom tells like the older sibling, "Hey, look, I don't have a babysitter. You have to take your baby sister with you." And I and they were forced to like be with me all the time. And I really thought that they were just the coolest people that I'd ever met. And we're all still such a close family today. It's it's really remarkable. I'm that's one of my things that I'm most grateful about for the MTV experience is my VJ family. Mark Goodman came to MTV pretty um, professional. He had, had already been on um, the radio in Philadelphia. He had been on WPLJ in New York City. Um, so he was really, really, um, you know, he knew what he was doing as far as the rock and roll DJ world. And he had such a great way of being on camera and being informative yet irreverent. He was so, and he's still so good at that. Um, he was just, he was so just like that perfect um, spunky yet doing, you know, the right job and being rocker. He, he had such a great um, way about him. Um, Nina also had had on-camera experience out here in California. She was sort of already involved in the video music world out here. So there was sort of already sort of a movement of doing on-camera interviews, and Nina played the harp, and she's a longtime rock and roller in her unique way, sort of coming up as a musician, and then just before MTV doing some um, interviews, little interviews and projects out here. And uh, she was insanely glamorous and, you know, blonde and super sexy and just, you know, totally sultry. And so she had, a, you know, checked a lot of boxes for MTV for sure. Um, I'm saving JJ for last um, for a reason. Alan Hunter was kind of more like me in that he was sort of young and he had moved to New York to be an actor. And um, he had met Bob Pittman at a picnic in New York City for Mississippi natives. So, and because Al's wife at that time was from Mississippi and Al had gone to college in Mississippi and somehow Bob Pittman started talking to Al who really had a Robin Williams sort of way about him, really funny and um, present, you know, present himself really well. And, and Bob Pittman said, hey, you should come in and audition, which he did and he got the job. So he and I were sort of the, the new kids on the block. Um, JJ w came to MTV, a rock and roll legend, and I think this is so, so important. JJ came to MTV being someone who had worked at WBCN, which was a legendary rock and roll radio station in Boston, and JJ worked at WBCN when Led Zeppelin came to the United States for the first time. JJ was driving the members of Led Zeppelin around in his station wagon, in his beat up old station wagon, showing them around Boston. He emceed their show at the Boston Tea Party, and Led Zeppelin later went on to credit JJ as helping to launch them here in the United States. That is so monumentally huge. Um, so JJ was already a rock and roll legend when he walked in the door at MTV. People like Rod Stewart, Roger Daltrey would only talk to JJ because they knew of his really, um, you know, important contribution to the world of rock and roll, especially for the British artists who were coming here um, and, and making their inroads to the U.S. market. And, you know, I mean, J.J., Rod Stewart gave J.J. a car, and um, Rod Stewart did come to J.J.'s service, and Robert Plant sent flowers. And, you know, for such a long time, when those guys would come into the MTV studios, they would only talk to J.J.